I ask 15 people about the treaty land and the law, and you get 15 different answers. Um, I know what the Native Americans uh, say, and I happen to agree with them, but I figured I'm trying to get for the for the layman, for you know, for to really break it down for the simpleton. The is this land where the pipeline is being built specifically the um, where the final stretch is where they would be drilling? Is that under the Treaty of Fort Laramie? And if it is, why was it? Why is it not shut down immediately? <laughs> um. There's two Fort Laramie treaties, and it's 1851 treaty land, is what it is. Uh, the, the 18th, after the Oregon Trail, after Oregon, the Oregon Trail was established like in 1848, mm -hmm. and they needed, and right away there was problems because that was Indian land, so they needed the Indians' permission to, to establish the Oregon Trail. And they got that permission in the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty. And five or six different tribes had their territories recognized by the United States in the 1851 Treaty. Mm -hmm. And the Sioux Territory essentially is the entire Northern Plains in the 1851 Treaty. Mm -hmm. From the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming to the west, the Yellowstone and Heart Rivers to the north, the Missouri River to the east and the Platte River to the south. Just a big block of the, the northern plains of the United States was recognized as Sioux territory in the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty. Then in 1864, gold was discovered in, by a guy named John Bozeman in what Montana territory. And so there was a gold rush, and so they were leaving the Oregon Trail and they were heading north toward what's now Bozeman, Montana, gold prospectors. Well, that was right, that's a violation of the treaty. That's, that's, the, 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 in the 1851 treaty, the Sioux said they can have the Oregon Trail and recognize our, our territory. But they didn't acquiesce to that. And they, they attacked those prospectors that were heading north off the Oregon Trail beginning in 1864. They shut down the, the Bozeman Road, they called it, the Bozeman Trail or the Bozeman Road, and the Lakota shut it down. And so the United States at that point negotiated another Fort Laramie Treaty called the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty. In the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty, it established an actual reservation for the first time. That reservation was all of Western South Dakota, present day Western South Dakota, west of the Missouri River. And the Missouri River, the east bank of the Missouri River was the eastern boundary of the res mm -hmm. the eastern boundary of the reservation. Thank you. And so the river was was on the reservation. The land that was in the eighteen fifty one treaty, outside of this Great Sioux Reservation, was denominated as unceded land, and that includes the land that we're talking about, that you're asking about. When you say unceded land, what does that mean? It means owned by the Sioux outside of the reservation. They agreed not to establish permanent settlements on it, but they kept it for hunting. Mm -hmm. But they, but they, but it, but it was their ownership. They unceded is determined. Article 16 of the 1868 Treaty. Mm -hmm. So all of the land in the 51 Treaty that was not included in the reservation established in the 68 Treaty remained Sioux land, but they agreed not to establish permanent settlements on it, but to keep it as hunting ground. So it is their land, it's just not for living, it's for hunting. Exactly. Okay. So this exactly. land, this so that land includes where they have the drill pad, where the, fi yes, the final yes. leg of the so pipeline. Actually, the, almost the entire length, really almost the entire length of the pipeline from the source to the river. Almost. Is is under all, that, all, almost, is under is, that 1868? No, it's under the 18, well, in 1868, it, it remained in their hands 
uh, as unseeded. It's all unseeded land. It's all 1851 treaty, Fort Laramie treaty land. Got it. That was characterized as unseeded in the 68 treaty. Right. Got it. The, the 68 treaty is Western South Dakota. That established Western South Dakota from the Missouri River to what's now the Wyoming-South Dakota border as a reservation. See, what they were trying to do is turn them into farmers, from hunters into farmers. That, that's kind of... That's the assimilation policy, which in many respects is still in place today. But that's a, that's a different story. Right. Um, but yes, that that's. I hope I hope I'm articulating it in a way that is understandable. So essentially, um, essentially, the 1851 uh, established the the federal government asked the Sioux tribe for this land to establish the Oregon Trail. And the Sioux, yep. the Sioux tribe granted them permission, and then, yes. and then uh, the federal government kind of breached that in between the 1851 and 1868. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not the federal government. Well, the federal, yes, it's those gold prospectors that that headed north to Montana off of the Oregon Trail, mm -hmm. beginning in 1864. Mm -hmm. The 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 Montana Gold Rush resulted in in a, a the immigrants instead of just staying on the Oregon Trail, they veered up think of think of I eighty and I twenty five. I twenty five goes from Denver to Billings, Montana. I Interstate eighty cuts across Nebraska. Interstate eighty is the Oregon Trail. Interstate twenty five is the Bozeman Trail. Mm -hmm. They have their People started hanging a right turn in order to go to Montana to prospect for gold. Right. That violated the treaty. The government sent in troops to protect those guys, to protect those gold prospectors. And the Sioux were engaged in battles against them. And and the result of that was the 1868 treaty, which established the reservation but maintained the Sioux land base outside of the reservation by denominating it as unceded land. And that includes the land where the pipeline route is and the Missouri River crossing. Right. And that would be the land where uh, they would be drilling under the water if they get permits. Yep. Okay. Yes. Now, how and, do... And now, significantly, George, significantly, the river is within the, the 1868 Treaty Reservation. And so the river is a very important resource to these folks. And that's why the water, that's where the water protector gene comes from. Because the river, the, the 1868 treaty, specific, they specifically included the river in the 1868 treaty reservation. Mm -hmm. And so the river, the Missouri River is an important resource from, from 1868 to these folks. They knew that it was a valuable natural resource. They knew it. And they specifically included it as their property. And so that's an important, that's a, a really important kind of historical fact that's res historical fact that's resonating today. And the Sioux tribe, the Sioux tribe uh, is the one who included it as their property in that treaty. Right, right. Well, they reserved it. They weren't granted anything. They owned the whole place. Right. They granted the United States everything they didn't keep. That's right. what happened. But I'm saying they the United, kept. They right, kept. Right. The United States. They reserved it. The United States didn't give the Indians anything. The Indians kept what they had previously, and gave gave the United States the rest. Right. What I'm saying is they kept the Indians kept 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 the uh, Missouri River. Right. Right. I, to say that it was granted to them is a little inaccurate. They no, no, no. Indians. I was talking about the yeah. Native Americans granted to the federal government, not the other way around. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's sorry about that. Yes. Yeah. So, just as a final verdict. So, yeah. if if this is clearly under treaty land, then why is the Department of Justice, the Army Corps of Engineers, President Obama, why is it a question if, if this is the historical background? I'm sure that's a naive question because I'm sure they've been trampling on treaty treaties Right. since the right. beginning of the country. But for the layman okay. who keeps asking okay. me if it's treaty land. And, well, the, the, in, in 18, a series of, con 
congressional acts in the late 1900s whittled away at their land use. So now we have seven Sioux reservations carved out of the treaty area, and the rest of the land was turned over to homesteaders after the Civil War. And so that's those are the, the descendants of the, de- the folks who live there now are the descendants of those homesteaders. Now, in 1946, Congress established something called the Indian Claims Commission to hear unresolved treaty claims of Indian tribes throughout the United States. Kind of like, kind of like the, the last spasm of the New Deal for Indians was the 1946 Act, Act of Congress called the Indian Claims Commission. And so it was a government commission where tribes would go and this commission would establish values of damages owed to the tribes for the treaty violations. And they awarded the Sioux $108 million, but the Sioux rejected the money and said, we, we want our land back. And, and so what the, the politicians will say is they need to take their money and, and get on with life. But there's a billion-dollar trust United States Treasury for the for the Sioux Nation that they're not touching because they want their land back. I see. Even though they're even though they're so poor, as you can see in Fort Yates, Cannonball. Okay, so that's that's the, that's kind of the short story on the treaty side of it. So they then, essentially the land was illegally seized, and uh, they the the tribe was uh, essentially. Try, uh, attempted to be paid off for that illegally seized land, and the tribe said no. So the land is still illegally seized, but it's just kind of that's that's the breaks because the government says it's, so. an, unre- it's an unresolved treaty claim. Is what it is. Right. Okay. Now, so uh, turn the clock up to 1940s. After the Dust Bowl, the severe drought of the Dust Bowl ended. There were catastrophic rains in the, in the plains, a severe flooding in the lower Missouri Basin, at the same time that the soldiers that were fighting World War II were coming home. And so Congress passed a massive public works project called the Picks Home Plan, which included six large dams on the Missouri River. The Corps planned it. They put the dams just below the Indian reservations. So the reservoirs are on the reservations. What you see, that reservoir that you see at Standing Rock, used to be dense woods and a much smaller, big, muddy Missouri River. The Corps dammed the river, flooded the reservation. Four communities, including Fort Yates and Cannonball, were relocated by the Corps of Engineers in 1960 to make way for the reservoir. Okay, when the Corps, the Corps took 60,000 acres of tribal land on Standing Rock for the site of the reservoir. Of that 60,000 acres, about 15,000 acres never got flooded. The tribe wants that, wants that land back. But, so that's part of the unresolved claim. Um, that's, why the Corps of, that's why there's Corps of Engineers land. And you they, they, and this 1948, I think you said public 1944 Flood Control Act. That obviously was not consulted with the Native Americans. It was just their land was taken. Right, right. Got they got paid in 1992 for that taking of land that happened in 1958. Mm-hmm. They got paid in 92 for land that got taken from them in 58 for a Wahi Reservoir. So they could pay for full length, mm-hmm. 35 years. So essentially by taking the payment, the land was formally the federal government's. Right. I see. Right. Okay. That's so, why there's court land there. But, they, but the court took more, they never should have built the dam in the first place, but they took a heck of a lot more land than they needed. There should be no core land. They should turn it back to the tribe. Um, but I, it, to put Dapple in context, the court issuing the permits for Dapple, for Dakota Access, is part of a long history of oppression by the Army against Standing Rock, by the Corps of Engineers against Standing Rock. You know, I said to somebody not too long ago, 
we, we talk about the Afghanistan war as being the longest war in American history. That's just not true. The war against the Standing Rock Sioux tribe is the longest war in American history. Mm -hmm. And this is the new front. And going back for a second, so the is the area right next to... I know you said pretty much the whole pipeline is on reservation land, but is the it's area... Not treaty land, not on reservation land, but 51 treaty land. Treaty, yeah. treaty land. Is, uh, yeah. is the... Is the whatever that 1944 uh, public works project was, since they accepted the money, was that land then, the land that was handed over to the Army Corps and out of the Native American jurisdiction, is that part of the land that's under, uh, under dispute right now? No. Okay. No, that was actual Standing Rock Reservation land. Okay. No, that's not, that's, I mean, the tribe wants the surplus the Corps took 10, 10 or 15,000 acres more than they needed, and the tribe wants that back and claims that. Right. Um, but I, what I'm but talking about the Missouri River, that and where they would be drilling under the Missouri River, that's not part that of, that's land, not the land that no, they accepted the payment no, for. That's just off the reservation, correct. Okay. That 1851 treaty, Army Treaty land, that was, that was characterized as unceded land in the subsequent 1868 Foreign Army Treaty. Recognizing the right of the Sioux to, to possess the land, but the Sioux agreed not to establish permanent settlements on that land, instead to establish their permanent settlements within the Great Sioux Reservation, which is western South Dakota. Right. And that 1851 treaty, they have never accepted money for that. Correct. There's a billion dollars sitting in a trust account. I see. I see. Within, the, within the treasury. It started out as 108 million. But what, what I'm confused about, what I'm confused about is what is the land from the 1944 uh, public works that was taken? It's land that's underwater. That was... Oh, okay. Well, the, the, it's, that's the land that's under the reservoir. It's the land from the high watermark of the reservoir to the old river, to the old river. But that's not the immediate epicenter of where the drill, where right. they'd be drilling. Correct. Correct. Okay. Got it. So essentially, the you're doing good because this is there's a lot. That, it's complicated. Yeah. And, and you're under you're understanding it. I hope I'm helping. Oh yeah, this is you're better than anyone I've talked to by by a mile. Uh, so the overall um, <laughs> the overall case that the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has filed that they have not ruled on yet, obviously is based on the treaty, and it's treaty land. No, 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 no you can't, no, it's based on the National Historic Preservation Act for the protection of cultural sites. Okay. And, and, and my work for the tribe focuses on the Missouri River and, and fighting the Corps of Engineers, but on this dispute against uh, the legal, the, the lawsuit against the Corps, I didn't do. Gotcha. Um, now, if they don't have in the main lawsuit, if it's not based on the treaty, then really the, whether this is treaty land or not, as, in terms of the court, that's not going to be the, the, the main thing that the court is looking at? Right. The courts, the courts are not generally, the treaties are generally not enforceable federal court generally but different different government agencies including the Corps of Engineers have policies that President Clinton made them to, made them implement to respect treaty rights those policies are enforceable in court but the courts are reluctant the courts will defer to Congress on treaty violations as long as there's fair market value paid for the land there is no question that this is 1851 Fort Laramie unceded treaty land. 